Have you lost your center? In particular, do you feel like you're not realigned to yourself? Um, I explain more about what that is and also how to fix, well, fix, improve your centeredness <laughs> in a moment. Uh, quick introduction. This is, by the way, this is my, rewind. My name is Barry, so I'll be welcome to my chats. This is my, this is my fairly frequent chats around self-mastery. And it's also tidbits about what I'm teaching in my self-mastery mentorship group, which I will talk about at the end. So let me start at the beginning, which is basically I've been noticing a lot recently, and I've been involved in some of these conversations recently, because of what we're going through in the journey that we're facing with the quarantine and, and uh, staying at home and everything else, it's adding to the stress level people are carrying. And a lot of people I'm noticing, and I've been tempted a couple of times, have been a little bit off center, meaning that they were reactive, they were upset, they were in argu they were argumentative, um, well, they still are, I won't say they were, <laughs> but there has been several instances I've been noticing in conversations where I felt this uh, friction, and that's being polite, and even animosity showing up. And so I wanted to speak to that a little bit, because first of all, in some ways it's justified the feeling, however the reaction and the uh, vitriol isn't necessarily necessary, but also I'll speak to what, can you, what you can do if you're dealing with this, either as a participant or as an observer, how you can be more aligned to your own centeredness and stay present and centered comfortably because that's the lesson i've been learning and teaching for a while now and i'm saying teaching because i've been on this path for a while i'll tell you more about, more about that as we get further in so i invite you to look at part of your own recent experiences maybe the last week maybe the last month maybe the last year even where you've been in interactions either through social media where a lot of people have done that or you've been in um direct conversation, although that's less and less frequent because we've been not so isolated. Maybe it's been by the phone or on a Zoom conference or something else like that. So plenty of instances where you might find yourself be um, provoked, <laughs> shall we say. So I want to speak to a couple of things to give you some thoughts. So first of all, if you've been dealing with that, stay tuned. I'm going to give you some ideas, suggestions, and clues of what you can do um, differently to be more centered, more balanced, more in harmony. Because, as, as I said, a lot of people are feeling a bit bent out of shape by what's been going on, understandably. But also I'm noticing people aren't necessarily dealing with it as well as they could. So my suggestion to you, invita invitation to you, is if you're, again, dealing with somebody else who's dealing, doing that, or you actually find yourself being tempted to do it yourself, and I've been tempted, I'm going to give you some things that I've been doing that may help you be more centered, more balanced, more aligned to yourself, and also less, ultimately, knocked out of shape. So let me speak to the prices first. When somebody triggers you, as in pushes your buttons, knocks you off center, help, makes you more upset, what they've done in one way is take control. Because your reactivity to that is an indication you're no longer in control. And in fact, I've talked about this in other talks about the response versus reactivity. Because when we are in reactivity, when we are triggered by somebody else's action, inaction, words, uh, blatancy, whatever that is, energy, emotions, whatever it is, then we're basically being a, um, well, <laughs> the, the analogy that's coming up, which is going to be one of the interesting ones, I forgot what they call these things, but you know the, the old uh, wooden bat that had, had a rubber ball attached by a rubber band, and you keep hitting it, and it keeps coming back, keeps coming back? That's kind of the feeling you're in when you're in your activity, because you're actually on a string, so to speak, but they have control of it, not you. And this is the, the downfall we come up against, emotionally speaking, in relationships, in business, in social environments, even on social media, because there's this, um, I won't say temptation, but there's this tendency to fall into reactivity. Because to be honest, reactivity can sometimes feel good. However, it's not functional long term it's not functional immediately it might be to let you blow off some steam maybe to feel better for a moment but you might start feeling regret, regret after that now if you don't feel regret after being reactive and vitriol, vitri, vitriolic vitriolic i think or um upset with somebody because they did something if you don't feel regret about that you may have some other emotional challenges going on because you may not care about that sort of stuff but i'm talking to those people and hopefully you're one of them who feel some sense of remorse afterwards because they wanted to feel more, well, I hate to say zen, 
but more of imbalance, more aligned, more comfortable in themselves. The challenge that we face is, again, because of the situation we're in right now, there's a lot more triggering available to us, negatively speaking. It's much easier to be bent, knocked off center, to be bent out of shape. And that centeredness becomes uh, less frequent. I've talked actually recently about the um, theme that I've been going through this month because of, because of what was said by my uh, spiritual teacher, Reverend Michael Odegaffe, about living in a place of more levity. And that's one of the keys I'll get to in a moment. But the recognition is, is that what we're facing is opportunity. Yes, an opportunity. Being reactive to other people, being caught up in the paradigm of being triggered by other people is, again, like being that ball on the bat, being stuck to it, can't get away not free. That's the that's the other price you pay for being in that situation. Not only being reactive, but you're also not free. You're being actually trapped and controlled by somebody else. Again, they win. They're victory. They're in control because you don't have dominion over your own self-centeredness. You're in centered space. Self-centered in a positive way, not a negative way, by the way. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the ego self-centered. Okay. Rewind a bit. This cycle of reactivity and, and um, control by other people is the epitome, is, is the backbone, basically, of codependency. I've talked about this before, too. So when you fall into that trap, just be aware, first of all, that you're giving up your power. Because that may alone switch you back into gear. Secondly, you may also discover and become aware of is that you don't have freedom to do what you want to do. So out of control, not free, not two states you want to be in. So let me give you some um, suggestions first. And again, I'll give you an invitation at the back at the end of this to join me in self-mastery mentorship because we're going into this in a greater detail. But give you some, some tips along the way. First of all, when, I mean, this can sound simplistic, but when you find yourself being triggered, pushed, um, reactive, take a moment to be present. Because the thing is, a lot of times our reactivity is because we've actually become absent to ourselves. We stepped out of our own engagement, so to speak. And so when you are, first of all, noticing that vitriol, that stew, that energy, that fire is showing up, take a moment to stop and be centered. Take a moment to stop and choose to be centered, meaning that you take a breath or you close your eyes or you bite your tongue for a moment or two, just to remember who you are. Remembering who you are is a first step because when you get into reactivity, oftentimes you forget who you are because you're so caught up in the moment, the reaction, the, res the, the um, antagonism, post react, yeah, that sort of thing, they actually forgetting who you really are. Now, not forgetting your name, but forgetting who you are energetically and who you are spiritually. Yeah, let's get spiritual for a moment. So in my work with my clients and in my own journey for the last 20, uh, 30 plus years, I've been on a very, very clear spiritual path that is much more about allowing to respect to flow from me to myself and from me to other people. And when you recognize that somebody else's upset is all about them, not about you, that's another key by the way. Actually, that's the big, one of the biggest keys. Oh, let, me, let me go on that one a bit more. One of the keys, first of all, so first of all, take a breath, get centered, to close your mouth, close your eyes, whatever you can do to detach from what's going on that's triggering you, so you're not hooked in, you're actually taking the hooks out, to step back into yourself for a moment and notice first of all, because it's the truth, that the person who's upset is upset in themselves. It isn't about you. And this is from, uh, I mean, I'm using, you know, way Tom and Domingo always in the Four Agreements talks about don't take things personally. That's kind of what this is about. Understanding that you don't have to take somebody who's upset to heart and you don't have to match their upset internally, first of all, gives you your control back. And secondly, lets you have freedom. Freedom to respond as you choose to. Because one of the most powerful things you can do when somebody's upset with you is not match them. One of the most powerful things you can do when somebody's upset with you is to respond from a place of kindness. Yes, as strange as this can sound, from kindness. Because when you do that, first of all, you're actually remembering who you are again back to the beginning back to yourself back to your presencing 
But secondly, when you speak from that place, who you who they may be who they may have got upset with isn't who's responding. So there's a shift. So you actually it's almost like martial arts where you're dodging out of the way. Not to avoid it, but to recognize that who you are isn't the person at fault. Now, you may have said something, done something that triggered them, but again, the triggering is a codependent reaction. That's their work to do, not yours. And I'm not saying you should go out and trigger people for the fun of it. That's not what I'm talking about here. <laughs> what I am speaking to is how to stay centered. So again, taking a breath, being centered, closing your eyes, closing your mouth, whatever works to get you present, being aware that the triggering from out there is out there, not in here. And then if you are feeling that dis um, disturbance inside, do the work to one, undo it, two, to heal it, and three, to understand what's causing it. Because you may discover that you have patterns and traits and experiences inside that come from way back that this is actually reminding you of. Now, maybe not be aware of it, but it tends to be what happens. Those, those triggers are usually wired in from something in the past. That's the deeper work. But if you've got these steps in place first to actually learn how to be centered first, to breathe in, to be present, which is not hard to do, and then learn how to respond versus react and be more uh, in, in your own um, alignment, then how, um, how your interactions grow from that point, how your conversations continue, how your interactions in anywhere, so again, social media or physical presence, however you do that, can shift. If you're in a relationship, this can be very helpful, by the way. This is a keystone of having more autonomy in your life. It's also a cornerstone of how to have a healthier life. And ultimately, it's a way to stay centered. Yes, back to centered. Because centeredness is a place of living life from wholeness. And that's the work I've been doing now, well, in my own life for many years. And what I've been distilling down and teaching, and will be teaching in self-mastery mentorship. So you've got some homework already. I've given you some ideas to play with. But if you want to go deeper, if you really want to commit to yourself and transform your life, to actually have more autonomy, ownership, and freedom in your life that is not governed by other people, but is fully under your domain, then I do recommend my self-mastery mentorship. Self-mastery means you own your space, you own your presence, you own all your magnificence to live your life from a powerful place. And the self-mastery mentorship is really a place of study, practice, and mastery for your life to succeed. I will put the link in the comments. You can check it out, of course, and I'll give you it to you verbally if you want to check it out right away, which is barryselby.com forward slash self-mastery, or one word. You can check it out and join in as a monthly or an annual member. Um, to be honest, right now, I'm not sure if I can extend it beyond a year, but if you sign up for the year, it's cheaper than doing it monthly. It's my gift in a way. It's also my mission to inspire, to awaken, to help you. If you want to go deeper, you know where to find it. And again, the link will be in the comments. But I'd like to hear from you how you're dealing with this. What, are, what is it that's challenging you? What is it that you're discovering for yourself that is working or not working? Where are you finding yourself being triggered? What's getting you stuck? What's in the way? Let me know in the comments. I'll respond in there if I can and give you some feedback. And again, I do invite you to check out my self mastery mentorship. It's my masterpiece. <laughs> it's my newest and most profound um, group journey. And I invite you to come join me there. So again, let me know what, you what your thoughts are. Let me know what you think about this comment, this talk, if this is working for you. Practice what I suggested. And if you have any questions, you can message me directly or you can leave comments below the video. I thank you for watching as always. I do invite you to please consider yourself your best aligned um, what's we're looking for, resource and to know that you are worthy and deserving of the best. I thank you for watching. And as my usual sign off is, I invite you to please Take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon.